I need things to complete myself. I need things to make me happy. And I got more and more dependent on this game of getting what I can get from the world. Everything became about this. Our whole personality is based on getting, getting. It doesn't know the difference between getting and love. Most people think that wanting someone, feeling the other completes them, is love. And in a way, in that moment of coming together, the whole seeking falls away and all there is is love. But that wanting of them has nothing to do with love. The wanting to keep someone, the wanting to attain someone, the wanting for them to be with you isn't love. It's this need, this separation and this need to fill it. And you feel like this drug fills it in some way. You feel better with them around. And therefore you hold onto them, you grab onto them. You try and strangle the life out of them to keep them. You kill it. You kill the whole relationship. Not just relationship, but in everything. In writing, in non-duality, in it all. The seeker holds on to this idea of enlightenment and it's all about get, 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 get. What can I take in for me, 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 me? And there's nothing wrong with that game. Of course that game's going to happen. If you feel uncomfortable, of course you're going to seek. And I'm happy now to talk about ways in which you can relax that seeking and you as a person can feel more balanced. But ultimately, there is no person there. Who you truly are is this awakeness, is this knowing of everything, which is totally empty and full at the same time. It knows it all. Actually, you could say the true source is even more mysterious than knowing, but knowing's pretty darn close. Pretty darn close. You like my American accent there? All there is is this beautiful awakeness, this aliveness, this sense of being. And this being is knowing itself, it's experiencing itself. But at the same time, it doesn't know a thing. It doesn't know anything, it simply is. It's so innocent. So it creates these brains that know something. It creates these brains that understand, that think, that remember. But it inherently remembers nothing. It creates all of this to have this 3D multi-interactive experience of itself. It even creates this sense of a person that feels like a me. But that is not who you are. You are not a person in moving time. That is being experienced. All suffering comes from believing that energy that believes it's somebody moving in time. So you think that you're a thought that's choosing. You think that you're a story that you repeat to yourself. You think that you're a feeling or a sensation. But all of that is being experienced just like the light, just like the room is being experienced. None of that is who you are. Who you are is that beingness which, who you are is that aliveness, that beingness which knows it all. Something knows those feelings. Something knows those thoughts. Something knows those sensations. That's all known. So obviously that can't be who you are. It's so pure and brilliant. There is nothing in this world which is more you. The thoughts, the sensations, the ideas. While that belief is, that energy is there contracting it all, as if that's you. Then suffering begins. Then you start believing you're someone in time and the other is someone in time and that you're in relationship and you're in relationship with this world and you have to get things. You have to be a certain way. You have to understand what's happening. You have to understand the dynamics. You have to not argue. You have to be friendly. You have to be lovable. And all these things naturally happen, it's part of being a human. But when it's taken to be you, then it becomes really serious and that love, that freedom is covered.
It's so wonderful. We are not these speaking things. This isn't a you speaking. This isn't a you hearing. This isn't a you looking. This isn't a you feeling. That is all that's happening. That's how life knows itself, by all these things that are happening. But that life is so still, so empty, so vast, so boundless, never affected by a thing, never dies, never is hurt, never is injured. But yet in the dream, the human is. And that's got its sadness and that's got its emotionality with it and that's got all these dynamics with it. But that isn't you. You are never that person. That person is an experience that's always coming and going. It's so clear and it's so simple. And it really changes life radically when this awakens again. And there can be different forms of awakening. There can be the intellectual type. And there can be this massive energetic explosion where it stops being contained in here. And then all there is is life experiencing itself. It's really bizarre. There's no boundary, but yet it's looking through this particular body. And it's so spacious and empty. Nothing's affected. But yet then there's still the human dynamics come along and Lisa bumps her head and falls over and gets it wrong and gets it right and has arguments. But none of that is a person anymore. And it does change the dynamics of the person. It stops that person doing things in order to complete itself. It's no longer doing something to complete um, its sense of lack, its sense of fear. Although it might still want a safe house, it might still want a lover, but none of that is about giving it to me, making me feel better. It's a totally different way of relating. But if you're identified, you won't be able to see it, or you'll see it as yourself everywhere. And if you think you do see it, so if you're projecting it onto me, that's still just the way you think it is. There could be maybe a sense of it. And we might find that just from these words there's a resonance, there's a knowing of what's being talked about. That you, as a small entity, are not the experiencer. There's something much greater and bigger here. It's so mundane and ordinary, but yet so spectacular and huge. 